Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here. Nice to have you guys back. We're looking at part two of a two-part series on how to install a Microsoft PKI infrastructure. In part two of two, we're going to focus on how to install the Microsoft Enterprise subordinate CA, which is a child of the standalone root. You can find all my videos up on YouTube under the tag Grizzamore. You can also find my videos on the website. Just go to www.itvideocoach.com for higher quality downloads. Be sure to check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grizzmore here. Nice to have you back in this part two of a two-part series on how to set up a Microsoft PKI infrastructure. If you might remember in part one, we just finished off with the install of the standalone root, and now we're ready to go ahead and get the install going for the enterprise sub. So just remember that we're building a structure for an internal Microsoft CA structure. So the first thing we want to do over here on the other server is just like we did on the original server on DC1, which is the standalone root, is we need to make sure that we have IIS installed. So whenever you install certificate services, it's highly recommended to make sure that you go ahead and install IIS first and make sure you have that in place. On your CA, you're going to want to take advantage of, from time to time, the web-based enrollment tool. So it's much easier to make sure you have IIS installed, and then you can install your uh, enterprise CA. It'll stop IIS and then create the uh, installation uh, for you or install the the actual website for you and then continue on with that installation so right now we're just going to go ahead and make sure we get IIS installed on this box okay so that installation completed successfully so IIS has been installed so that'd be the very first thing you want to do is you need to make sure you get IIS installed so once we have that out of the way we can go ahead and install our enterprise subordinate so now we want to go back into control panel add remove programs Add Remove Windows Components. And we're going to install Certificate Services. And just like it did on the original server, it's going to warn us about the fact that uh, if we ever change the name of the CA or change the domain affiliation, uh, that can cause problems. So just be warned that whatever box you're going to install it on, you want to make sure you don't change the name or the domain. because you know, built into the certificate in the hierarchy of the structure of your CAs is the name of the CA and its domain affiliation is all kind of tied into your cert. So you just can't go changing the name of one of your CAs after you issue your um, certificates. It could invalidate the certificates that you've issued. Okay, now in this next step, we have to pick the CA type. Now the goal here is to install an enterprise subordinate. So by default, when we go in to this install, because we've already got the standalone root installed up on the other box, and it's on the same network, it's a member of the domain, he can see that other box out there, and he automatically defaults to enterprise subordinate. Uh, that would be the Microsoft recommended best practice. So we have a standalone root, and we have an enterprise sub, and that's exactly what we want. Now for some reason at this point, things were grayed out and you didn't have all the options, the number one reason would be you're at a server and you're logged in locally. The machine's a member of the domain. You have to be logged into the domain. Also, you could have problems with maybe DNS records being corrupted or not properly authenticating uh, when you log in for DNS reasons and those type of things. So just make sure you're properly authenticated and logged in correctly to have all these options right here. So go ahead and click Next and we'll call this guy the Enter Enterprise sub CA. And notice the validity period is determined by the parent CA. And we noticed that before that that was five years. And again, the database is always going to be backed up whenever you do a ASR backup or a system state backup. And here's the really cool part of this install that I really like is that when I install the enterprise subordinate, he automatically sees that there's a standalone root and what he's doing right now is generating a public and private key. I need to take my public key, ship it off to the standalone root. And what we're going to use on the standalone root is the subordinate CA uh, template right here. So we're going to ship this over to DC1. 
We're going to ship over our public key. And when I click browse right here, it sees him right online. This guy right here, the standalone root. You know, he sees him online right away, right? See that? So he actually sees him right on the network, which is, which is very, very interesting how it just automatically finds him. We click OK. Now we do have the option to save the request to a file, but since I can see my CA online, there's really no reason to put it in a file and then paste it to the web-based enrollment tool and all that. We're just going to go ahead and click Next. It's got to stop IIS to install the web-based enrollment tool. We'll let it do that. Okay, now it sent the request for the certificate to the CA, and it says that it's in a pending state, ID2. So if we look over here at uh, pending request, we can see that we have the ID2 for that certificate. Now the reason this is number two is because number one is the self-signed root certificate here on the CA itself. So it just tells us that it's in a pending state. We're going to have to remember to come back over and make sure that we get, you know, this uh, certificate installed. So we're just submitting the request right now. And remember, we're submitting the request to a standalone route. Now it also is going to remind me that, you know, when the installation is complete, that we have to come back and install the certificate. Okay? Again, we're sending the certificate to a standalone route. That means we're going to have to manually issue that certificate and then come back and install it on the Enterprise Sub. Okay? So the CA is installed. We'll open up the MMC. We'll add certificate authority, local computer, and certificate templates. And when we open this up, we can see that our CA is not online. The white circle with the red little box there tells us that he's not online. Now one thing I want to point out real quick is one of the main differences between a standalone CA and an enterprise CA is that on the uh, enterprise CA we have a special folder here with certificate templates. Now we don't have that folder on the standalone route because the enterprise sub can issue certificates automatically. Now once we get this configured, this will come to life here and we'll see what certificates we can actually issue automatically. So what we need to do right now is go ahead and issue that request. So because it is a standalone CA, I have to manually issue that certificate. It's now an issued certificate. Now I can come back over to the server. And that is my enterprise. I'm going to right click, go to all tasks, and I'm going to install that certificate. Okay, now this is a little weird right here. All I have to do is cancel. It sees the CA to go grab that issue certificate. We're going out and grabbing the certificate right there, just like that. And now we have that installed. Now when I come back in, when I go to all tasks, notice that the option to install the certificate is gone. Now all I need to do is start the service. Okay, and that service is started. I'm going to save this snap into my desktop. Just like that. We'll close the snap in. We'll save our settings. We can see that we have a root. We have an issued certificate. I'm going to open this back up. And we should have a functioning enterprise CA. We have our green check. And we should be able to see that we have live certificate templates. Remember before there was a little error right there? Uh, once you get everything started and loaded, close the snap in and reopen it. That little element error uh, goes away. Okay? So we now have a functioning enterprise subordinate that's ready to go to issue certificates. All right? So there you have it. That wasn't so bad, was it? That's how you set up a standalone root with an enterprise sub. Okay? Now I have some other videos out there you want to check out. For example, if I show you how to issue a certificate to a website, I'm going to be doing that based on this hierarchy. So it's a pretty good video presentation. You've seen how easy it is to build a hierarchy. It's not so bad. And then we're going to look at how to issue certificates to websites. I'll have other videos to show you how to issue a certificate to a user with auto enrollment. Be sure to check them all out. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.